Good morning, everybody. It's Friday the 8th of April. Mike in for Jamie. It's Zoo Lovers Day. And a very happy birthday to Vivian Westwood, Patricia Arquette, Matty Healy and Robin Wright. The massacres by Russian troops in Ukraine have shocked the world and Thursday saw the UN General Assembly hold a vote to suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Council. Ukrainian ambassador to the UN, Sergei Kizilitsaya, made a strong plea to the Assembly to take action and urge them to vote yes. Pressing no means pulling a trigger and means a red dot on the screen. Red as the blood of the innocent lives lost. Well, the vote did pass with 93 in favour, 24 against and 58 abstentions. The move was championed by US Ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, who described the vote as important and historic. Once the vote suspending Russia passed, the Russian delegation announced they decided to give up on their membership anyway. And there was more Russian spin from Putin's press spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, who spoke to Sky News and refused to concede the atrocities in Bucha were committed by Russian troops. We insist that the whole situation is a well-staged insinuation, nothing else. He did, however, admit to major Russian losses for the first time. We have significant losses of troops. It's a huge tragedy for us. NATO's foreign ministers met with Ukraine's Dmitry Kuleba in Brussels on Thursday. He had an urgent message for them as Russia looks to reposition its troops for a renewed assault on the east and south of Ukraine. My agenda is very simple. It has only three items on it. It's weapons, weapons, and weapons. Labour commended the EU's plans for a fifth round of sanctions on Russia, but had a warning they'll only be of limited use if there isn't a total ban on Russian energy supplies. As long as uh, the West continues buying Russian gas and oil, it is supporting Ukraine with one hand while supporting Russia war machine with another hand. NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg says NATO ministers are committed to continued support for Ukraine to prevent in its struggle with Russia. We agreed uh, that we must support uh, other regional partners under pressure and we agreed to step up cooperation with our partners in the Asia-Pacific because the crisis has global ramifications. The US has now removed Russia's favoured nation status and is set to ban Russian oil. The UK's Foreign Secretary Liz Truss says Britain is on the same page. The UK is now banning all imports of Russian energy. We're sanctioning more banks and we're stepping up our supply of weapons to Ukraine. The government finally announced its new long-term energy strategy on Thursday. The intention is to develop energy independence and increase the amount of power from wind and hydrogen. It also features a significant investment in nuclear energy, which got Boris all patriotic. This is the home of nuclear energy. We first split the atom. In the UK, we had the first civilian nuclear power plant. We're bringing nuclear home. We go on, Boris, it's coming home, it's coming, fission's coming home. Anyway, uh, the plan, which is focused on 2030, didn't impress Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer. All we've got today is a, a cobbled together list of things that could and should have been done over the last 10 to 12 years. So it isn't enough. It's too little. It's too late. And former Labour leader and former Energy Secretary Ed Miliband says the whole plan sounds pretty familiar to him. In fact... He may have left it on his desk. I left a plan for 10 sites for new nuclear. We've had 12 years of the government not doing it. But look, all of that's ancient history. They should be getting on now with new nuclear, but they should be getting on now, Kay, with onshore wind, solar and insulating homes. That's what could make a difference. History was made on Thursday in the U.S. as Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson was confirmed as the first black woman on the U.S. Supreme Court. The Senate vote was confirmed by the first female vice president, Kamala Harris, who was delighted to be part of an historic day. On this vote, the yeas are 53, the nays are 47, and this nomination is confirmed. The Democrats' Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer summed up the significance of the moment. We are taking a giant, bold, 
an important step. This is a great moment for Judge Jackson, but it is even a greater moment for America as we rise to a more perfect union. Still to come on the Smart 7, Tiger roars back into action at the Masters, and James Corden is back out on the road. Right after this. Welcome back. There was Europa League quarter-final action on Thursday night. Rangers lost 1-0 at Braga, but still have a second leg at Ibrox to come. While West Ham had Aaron Cresswell sent off for pulling down Moussa Dembele, but battled back to secure a one-all draw against Lyon. The opening day of the Masters Golf in Augusta saw Tiger Woods back on the famous course in pursuit of a sixth green jacket. He did pretty well for someone who's half man, half machine, and hasn't played a major for more than a year, finishing the first round on one under par in a tie for 10th place. What a reception, what a reaction, what a statement. He steps up and posts an opening round of one under par 71, a round many of us never thought we'd ever witness. Now, it's been two years since James Corden has been able to menace celebrities with automobile-based karaoke, but rejoice, car concert fans, carpool karaoke is back, back, back. The first guest in James's SUV is none other than Nicki Minaj, and they got started with some freestyle rapping. Oh, uh, me and James, um, looking good. Like we should. Also turns out, Nikki, the queen of accents, does a pretty impressive Adele impression. Yes, I go viral for basically anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, I sit down at the basketball game, right? Mm. I don't look at the camera. I go, I do one of these numbers. I go like... And I'm, I'm viral. Do you know what I mean? Like, people pay for these sort of viral moments. <laughs> Benedict Cumberbatch is a busy boy these days, from Power of the Dog to Babysitter in Spider-Man's No Way Home. And now he's back in his own movie, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Stand by for more dimension-flipping, parallel world-spinning adventure, with guest appearances from WandaVision's Elizabeth Olsen and Sir Patrick Stewart. It hits cinemas on May the 4th. I've been... dreaming... every night... the same dream. Every morning, the same. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Doris.